I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless.com. Today is January 15th, 2021. And this video, video I'll be showing you a woodworking jig I 3D printed. Okay, so here is the problem I'm trying to solve. Uh, now down in my basement, we're doing, I'm doing some woodworking right now, just making some basic shelves, nothing very fancy. Uh, but one of the things I do like to do when I'm building these, well, one's actually not freestanding, but the other one is, uh, but I like to put some little feet on them because, hey, you know, the basement, someday will get flooded, there'll be some water. And so what I like to do, I've done it in the past, is, you know, I'll take a two by four, put it down, put another two by four underneath it here. And what I'll do is I'll actually drill some thick holes through the bottom and the top of each and then glue dowels in them and, and then connect them together. And that's just, uh, to me, it's a stronger bond. It's just kind of what I want to do. So anyway, so I thought, hey, I, I did a couple of them and I did them real quick and they were a little ugly and I was like, eh, eh, it works, okay. Why don't I go 3D print a jig? Let me go figure out something in Open SCAD, and I can go design a jig, and that way it could be a little modular, and it can work, and then I can um, and I can do it. So I came up with a little thing, so you know. So here, uh, well, I don't always show this, but I have a little, I always have a design book. And so I'll show this right now. Here's my design. So the idea, you can see these two by fours going down to this other two by four, and there's a little hole, there's little dowels be here and dowels here. So I need to drill some precise holes up there and down there. And so I had some little different ideas here where I'll you know, take a little simple design like this to cover over it and do that. And so um, what I came up with, oh, and before I get too far, I've already stuck this out on Prusa uh, printer. So it's uh, 52148. So I'll put the link up in the show notes. I'm gonna go find that and go do that. But what I did, I came with, you need two sides. And so there's this side, which would be the bottom piece. So here's the bottom piece, we got the holes. And that goes over just fine like that. And then we want to match it up with a top piece. And also what I did, and it's a little ugly here because I've actually been using this, um, is I have some little 3D printed dowels that are actually, technically the way I did it, they're the exact same size as the hole. So in truth, they're actually not going to fit when you 3D print them. But you 3D, what I did is I 3D printed them and then I took my drill, you know, went right through them real quick. Uh, and that was enough to shim off the sides. Then it fit and it was really tight. Now, since then, it's actually gotten a little loose. Um, still working, but that's one of those ideas. If this uh, starts to fail, I just 3D print another one the exact same size. But the reason I did that is so I could match them up precisely. So I can do that and then do that. So, boom. And also I made these, these extensions a little longer here and here so I can take a clamp and clamp it down. So I would do this, clamp it down, drill my holes, and I'd hook it over here where I want, line it up just correctly. And then I would clamp this, take it off, and I have it in the right location. So now this is in the right location that I want, pull these dowels out, and boom, I could drill. So that's the idea that kind of had, and it actually worked pretty well. So uh, the few sh new shelves I put down using them have lined up kind of nicely, and it's actually a nice thing. Um, anyway, wood jigs, yay. Uh, but... There's a lot more I want to go over it, but let me go over a couple other things. I actually did a wood jig video, 2018. Wow, it's been almost uh, almost two years. Well, two years, two and a two and a bit, I guess. 2018, where I was still growing my beard out. So I did a jig back then, and so it was interesting work. I don't know, did I do an open S cab back then? I didn't even bother looking before. Oh nope, I did it in um, in Fusion 360. So another good choice, but it is nicer. I don't say nicer. It's a good idea if you're doing Fusion 360, depending on what, how complex you're doing it. But if you're doing something that can be a simple jig, it's really nice to define it as code. That way I can change it real quick. So like here, uh, I'll have to look at my notes when I do the open SCAD. I forget what the size hole is. Like let's say it's half an inch. But if you decide to go a smaller one, I could easily update the code and then boom, update this with that versus going to open SCAD. There are ways to make your life easier in Fusion. I said open SCAD. There are ways to make your life easier in Fusion 360, but still, for something like this where it's kind of clear cut and very simple design, very square, I think Open SCAD is a good way to go. Now, before I go into more of it, let me go over the numbers. Now, this video, oh, wish I had more time to do more stuff. This video is actually a video of a different size because I had a lot of tests. So this video is actually, here's this guy that goes this way. I made another one that goes that way. So I kind of, video the wrong one but the numbers should be the only i did with my numbers i did weigh this one i did weigh the, the correct one that i'm using uh but the time might be a little different if you printed out the exact ones i'm doing but anyway 
look at the numbers I have for somewhat the wrong one. Uh, total time it took 10 hours and zero minutes. It took 8.2 central electricity and it weighs 0.1 kilograms. The real one pays, weighs 0.1 kilograms. And at $20 per kilogram, that comes out to $2 of material. So total cost was $2.09. So the only difference in my calculations might be the time. So this is bigger than this. So maybe it might take a more hours to print this versus the other one. Uh, but we're not talking, we're talking maybe a few more hours. We're talking a few more since electricity. We're still just a couple of bucks to print this guy and get it going. Um, but with that, let me go show the video right now that I made uh, recording actually using them. And then after we go through that video, the next thing we'll do is I'll show you uh, how I did, how did I design an open SCAD, even though you can download the files, let me go over what I did in open SCAD. Okay. So I put, well, here I am in my messy, messy basement. So we're building some shelves. And so I've already put one foot on, but I've, I've done this in the past. Just a thing I do. So I'll, I'll build some shelves and I'll build kind of like a foot for this that goes underneath the shelves. And then we'll have two pieces of wood kind of hook in there. And just to make life easier, I put the dowels in there. So in essence, what I'm going to end up with is that. So I'm not going to go in great detail. But here's, I'm not going to do every little piece, but here's the pieces I printed out. So there's the piece that goes over. I can stick that on right now. And here's a piece that goes here, and here's these two pieces. Now this piece, these pieces are meant, I'll show you in a bit, to kind of help connect these together just to make it easier to everything line up later. But the way I printed these, I printed these exactly the size of the hole. So once they're when they're first printed, they're not going to fit. They're too tight. But as you can see when I drilled, I'm going to hit the side a little bit and rim it out, and it worked pretty good afterwards where I can get these in, so I was happy with that. So, stick that on. It's not super tight, and that was somewhat intentional, so I can just come in here, actually hit the sides because I got more, so get it on there. Press that on so it's not gonna move around. And then hit it. You should wear safety glasses, right? But <laughs> I'm not. Because I'm just going quick. I gotta get that all pressed against. It might be hard to see because I'm probably in the way. Nope, you're not. Now, I already just a few minutes ago. And I'll have to say, compared to what I did earlier, I have another shelf I built a week or two ago. And I just did it, kind of lined it up by hand and kind of did it. Um, this is actually <laughs> it's a lot more... The precision is making it much easier to kind of smack it in than what I thought. So it actually... Yeah, this, this is just better. Okay, so now I want this to go over this. But I also want to line it up. So when I... That's a, the that's a nice thing about 3D printing is you get so precise. So this width is exactly matching this width. And also these, oh, right there, well, actually both are. And the holes line up so perfectly. So what I can do is I can come in here to help myself even further. Should say, let me, let me back up a minute. What I was going to do is I was going to put this on, my original idea, and then put that over and kind of line it up because they do match up. But you know, things get, you wiggle a little bit. So it should be, it would be pretty okay, but then I thought, well, hey, I can just print out some of these and shove them in and get it lined up a lot more perfectly. So I kind of shove those in. And then get that shoved in. And now you can see it's all kind of one piece now. I don't need them to get perfectly flush. It's okay if they're a little bit off. But then, boom, put that there. And then, I get everything lined up like I want to. So I want this to rest against the ground like that. So I'm happy. 
Then it's all lined up like I want. Let me come in here. Make sure it's where I want it. Grip that down. I can pop that off. And then I can, I know. Turned out you married a husband who's smart on some days, right? And then these are going to be hard to get out, so you need, probably need something to help you yank them out. Boom, boom. And then... Yeah. It's a good idea. Because <laughs> I don't want to mark up the front yeah, of my guy. Yeah, I don't want to drill through my shells, put something... In. Even though I don't plan on going deep. Now... I'm lazy, because I, I kind of know what, watch, I'll screw it up now. I do this so much that it's like, okay, I kind of gauge the depth and I'm okay. But if not, you can just take a piece of tape, like a piece of blue, blue, uh, especially a piece of blue, uh, bleh, what's that called? Paint tape? And you wrap it around where you want to go, and that way you can really easily see how far you want to go down. Now I'll come back and adjust this some more. That's all I intended to film for this. Uh, but you can see I've already used this one twice over on this leg, and now I'm using it twice. And you're, you're probably going to mess it up over time. But that's okay. It's a 3D printed part. It's dirt cheap, right? Um, and this is, I don't know how many shelves this is good for, but it'll probably do, I don't know, maybe six or seven shelves without really doing much damage, depending on what you do. But also the nice thing is if once I get this, if I like this and I want to use it again in the future and I destroy this, I push a button, I print out the exact same thing again. Or what would be really interesting, I'm, I'm into woodworking. I like some woodworking, but I, like, I don't have a woodworking channel. But if you're a woodworking channel guy or something like that, and you are trying to, and you use jigs, it would be a cool thing to say, oh, hey, guys, here's how you do this thing, and here's the jigs you can 3D print out to make what I make, and then they've got the exact same things you do. So there's a cool potential for that, which I'm sure someone's already doing. But it would be it. A cool thing. So, there we go. That one's done. And then after that, well, I don't know if I showed, did not show this. But these, you know, for those who are not where, if I didn't make it clear what I'm doing, these pegs go in. So the pegs go in, pegs go in there, smash, put some glue in there, of course, before I do, smash it all together. And I'm also coming through and putting some screws after the fact to make sure it's really nice and tight. So that was the entire idea. So there you go. Okay, I went down and grabbed the drill, which is a half inch drill, which is the one I've been using in this particular case. So with that, let me recreate what I did in OpenSCAD. Now, if you happen to go look at the OpenSCAD files, I actually have a file per jig, so I don't make them too modular, so you can actually download each one and recreate it if you want. But first, let's start this. So we'll say width of the top piece. Boom, boom, boom length of the top piece. Oh, and I should do this before I get too far. There we go. So openscad.org cheat sheet. So for those who aren't, just in case, for those who aren't familiar with OpenSCAD, OpenSCAD is a 3D rendering program where you can write the uh, program as code. So you can design, you can design something in code, just say a 3D, 3D design system in code. So you can write as code, you know, you can say make a square here, do this, manipulate it in some way, and then render the STL, and then now, boom, you can go print it out, which is kind of cool. Uh, so I may refer to this cheat sheet from time to time, um, which is a good thing. If you get lost, go to the cheat sheet, and you can kind of find the tools here. Okay, so we'll say width of the top piece. And I'll say of a variable, and I'll say width equals 39. Um, and also links, measurements, are in millimeters. Technically, if you want to be an anal nerd about it, they're unitless. So they're really not in millimeters. They're not in inches. They're not in anything. However, one unit here kind of interprets to one unit in STL. One unit in STL is unitless too. But when you import that into like a Prusa slicer, one unit equals one millimeter. So it all kinds of work out, works out that one equals one millimeter. Uh, so now we'll go down here and we'll start really simply. So I'll say, uh, 
we'll just start simply, I'll, I'll add stuff over time. So another variable will say whole variables, and we'll start simply, we'll say a whole diameter equals 13. And that seemed to work out for the half inch. Uh, but also, you know, if you need to tweak it some more, you say 13.4 or 12.8, you can change things. You can go like that. But I'll use 13, which worked for me. And so what I'll do is I'll come down here, and the first thing I'll do is I'll make a square. So I can come down here and say square 10, uh, and this is a um, non-three-dimensional. So I can hit, hit uh, review here. There's my little square. Uh, the next thing I need to do is linear extrude. If you don't know what that is, I'll say I'll say five on that just for now. Uh, it's kind of like for using those old Play-Doh toys where you put the Play-Doh in and you squish it out and it shoots it out. So that's taking that 2D shape and extruding it. So now if I run that, boom. Now there's my actual 3D shape. And if I wanted to, this is a preview. Here I could actually render it. And then I could hit STL and save it as an STL file and bring it in and print it. But now we have to do some fun stuff. So I will come over here and I will say, mm -hmm. uh, we'll change these over time. So we're going to come down here. And I say square. Square does a square, both the same sides, but you can abuse a square. I don't know why they didn't say it. Eh. The guys who made this program are anal math nerds, and a square is a special case of a rectangle. So I don't know why they didn't make rectangles, but anyway, we can make a square into a rectangle by doing something like this. I can do 10, 5, and boom, now I get a rectangle. But now what I want to do is up here, I got my width and my length. So here I can say width, I can use the variable. That way I can change it later on. Say length, uh, that's the way I did it. Or, oh, I did it the other way, length. I'll do it this way, opposite. Width, boom, there we go. So that's my basic bottom shape right there. And now what we need to do is we're going to cut a hole in it. So we will make a hole real simple. Here I'll actually comment it out for a second. So I'll come down here and I'll say circle. Uh, so I say circle and a hole. Uh, circle, if you put a number in here, that's the radius. But I can say D equals some number and that's the diameter. Or I can use the variable we have, diameter, boom. And boom, we see a hole and it's centered right there. But now we have to move it. So, uh, well, let's back up. If you do a square and a circle, kind of get this little funny shape, they kind of merge together. They're not one piece, but they kind of end up making one piece. But now I can go here. I want to subtract the hole from, um, from the square. So I can use a thing called a difference. I can say difference, boom, and close it out here. Now you don't have to put these spaces in here, but I do, it makes it easier to read. So difference says, hey, everything in these curly braces, and you'll notice if I select this, this curly brace lights up, and so does this one. It says, take the first object, whatever that may be, and then every other object, subtract it from the object. So here you'll see the circle will cut it, little, cut it cut out. But I really want to cut it out of the center, so I need to move it. So I'll go, um, I can do a translate. So I'll say translate. And so we want it to be in the center. So we can say, we can say uh, length divided by two and width divided by two and do that. And I think that'll get us something that it does not like. Okay, what do you not like? Tran oh, no? Let's translate. Oh, I didn't put it in square brackets. There we go, square brackets, sorry about that. So what that's gonna say is, hey, translate, which means shift the board around, move, move me over length by, divided by two and width divided by two, and that should move it, boom, dead center. But now what happens if we want more holes or we want to move them around or do different things like that? Well, we can do some cool things. We can make a for loop here is what I did. So I can say for i equals, we put some brackets in here, and I can give it a number. I can say one, two, three, which will say, what that's gonna do is it's gonna have a, it's gonna set the, it's gonna do technically three loops. 
it'll do three loops through. So it'll do this three times. And every time it comes through, it'll change the number. So it'll say, first time it does this, I will equal one, then I will equal two, then I will equal three. Um, but if I did it right now, it just basically draws that circle three times. So what? So what I want to do is I want to adjust things in a funny way. So what I can do here is I can use some more variables. I can say, I'm going to kind of copy what I did before. Left adjust equals, uh, because if we think about it, our width. Our width here, for my purpose, I want to be in the middle. So I want to do more holes, but I always, always want them to be in the middle. So that width divided by two, that's a, that's a fine number. That works for me just fine, I think. Oh, I did it a funny way. Ah. Backing up a second. Okay, let me remove this circle for a second. Look at the code I did. These are just comments. Okay, backing up, backing up. Okay, there's our square. Uh, what I did in my code is, see this square is over here, but if I want it to be centered on the x, y, I can put a true here, which is gonna center it. That's what I did. That way, I could have started out this way and been lazy and put that circle there and not moved it, and that works, right? Uh, so in that case, if I wanted to translate it, I don't need to do the width at all. I can just leave that as a zero. So now I can say that, do a loop, translate, and we'll see, well, I moved it that way. I moved it length, so let me move it zero. It does the same thing three times, so big deal. So left adjust equals, Copy what I did here. I said minus length. This is where algebra nerds come in. Uh, plus i times uh, length divided by one plus whole number. Boom. And if I do that, it doesn't like me. Oh, well. Oh, the whole number. Uh, how many holes I want? Whole number equals two. Ah, there we go. And run that. Did not like that. Why? If length one plus whole number. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not doing anything with the information. So that's working. I just need to put it right there. And probably tweak a little bit. So here we're making this left adjustment. Where are we going to put that hole? And boom, now we got three. So what I'm really doing is saying, hey, I started here at the zero. So let me go all the way to the edge here, which would be length divided by two. So let me go minus length plus minus two. And then let me go over a little bit based on how many there are. So I say the i, which starts at one, i, which is one, two, three, multiplied by the length divided by one plus the whole number. You can go math nerd about that, but that's what it's doing. And that way I can come in here and say, I can also, well, this needs to be changed right here, the whole number. So there we go. We've got, all right, we have whole number. Why are you giving me three? Oh, because I put it there. Oh, sorry. Two. I'm looking at my other code. Two. So there's two holes. The nice thing is if you do something like this where you put some variables in here, I can say, you know what? I really want four holes and I want a diameter of nine. And boom, run that. It changes it exactly how you want. So in my case, I wanted 13. I wanted two. Boom. There we go. Uh, and then the next thing we want to do is we want to extrude things at different levels. So we have these differences. We have that. So it's our base plate. Um, but then we want to linear extrude it in a certain way. So what did I do here? I said different. Oh, there we go. Ah, that's what I did. Okay, so now how high do I want it? What I want is there's also a whole depth here. So whole depth. How thick is that whole piece going to be? So I said 10. And so I'll say whole uh, depth plus brim total height, which I haven't put in yet. So there's these also these brim, brim numbers, brim variables. I wanted the brim top to be three and the brim total height 
uh, to be 40 in my case. So I'll take that brim total height. So now if I run that, I should get this big giant block, but I want to cut out into it. So now I want to make another piece. And in fact, I will see, I'll copy this boom and comment that out. And I'll just make it short for a second so I can better show what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to come down and make a different piece. And I, I'm going to use color so I can, you can actually use color when you're, not when you're rendering, but when you're testing. And most of the time it works. So I can say here, I'm going to make this color. And here I'm going to make a cube. So in this case, this one I'm going to make a three-dimensional object and not bother extruding it. Because I didn't need to. Which I could have done earlier too. And I'll say length, uh, width, and then brim, total height. And we want to center it. If I run that, oh, you gotta put my semicolon. We see that. As we see, we center it, but also it's center, but also it's below. We want it to go above. So I need to translate that a little bit. Translate, boom, 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 boom. And I can do X, Y, Z. I can move those in those 3D planes. X, I don't need to move. Y, I don't need to move. Z, I want to move. And I'll move it my brim height, uh, brim total height, brim total height. Uh, boom, divide by two. Uh, plus the whole depth because we want to go past, we don't want to cut the whole depth out. Boom. So here's the whole depth. And so, oh, about there. And you're not going to show it. 933. Something doesn't like. Uh, hmm. Brand total. Doesn't say, oh, how about trans, ah. How about I spell translate, right? Translate. Boom, so there is exactly where that would be. Now, if I subtracted both of them, we'd see if I had the big one and subtracted that, we'd end up with what we have for yellow here. But what I want to do is I want to make this uh, red one smaller on the inside. So what I'm going to do is we have that uh, brim, let's see, width, brim height. We want to shrink it. Oh, we want to increase the size on that. Okay. What I did is I left this like this. I added two to the height just to make sure that I'm bigger than my cutting surface. I want to make sure I'm okay with that, um, uh, which in fact cut the other one off. Okay, that's okay. But now I want to go back to my original square and I want to make it bigger. So I have a length uh, plus two, I mean, two times brim top because I want to have a brim to it. So I'll, I'll add a little brim to the top. Plus two times brim top. And that should give me something like that. Boom, perfect. There we go. So now, if I make this full height, which I will here, I'll take that back out, take that out, run it. If I subtract that, it'll cut into it. So I'll make a difference. Boom, put that down here, grab all this, and shift it over. So this difference is gonna take this whole thing is going to be considered an object and then everything and this is an object so it'll take this whole object and subtract it from this object so boom now when you're doing a preview sometimes the rendering is not perfect here the rendering is not perfect so now we need to hit the um the actual render rather than the preview and boom we got our box so that's kind of how you can do it in open scad so fun 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 a really good, this is a really good, uh, writing a good program, I'm saying you could do it better, but this is a good thing you could probably do an OpenSCAD because then you could uh, more easily add more holes, move them or tweak them or change them. So this is probably a good way to make jigs. And it worked for me. So anyway, there you go. Hope that was helpful to someone out there.
It's a new year. And my prayer for everyone is that this year is better is a better year for you and yours than 2020 was. Up next, for those who follow me on Instagram, you may have seen a photo of some Prusa Mini parts. Well, I kind of have a broken Prusa Mini. Not too bad, but the next video will show me. I got the parts together, so the next video will be me going over fixing it. So it should be a good video. Um, check it out when I post it.